If you're looking for the easiest, quickest and best way to manage your content cadence and your editorial calendar, look no further. This is the video for you. I'm going to show you how to use a free tool to manage your content calendar, your editorial calendar and everything to do with your video content. Most people default to using a third party for things like their content calendars and their editorial suites. This is mostly because they don't have the time or the knowledge to build it themselves. Outsourcing to a third party not only opens you to costs, data risks, but also it means you're using somebody else's tool instead of something that's built exactly for your business. Not having your own bespoke solution can lead to missed opportunities, a waste of resources and a lack of consistency. All things that can really be detrimental to your brand growth. Let's break down why you need a content calendar, how you set up a simple content calendar, how you tailor it to your exact needs, and most important of all, how you use it in practice. But first, head across to my site, check out my Gumroad, pick up your free tools. So why do you need a content calendar? Well, anybody will tell you that the key to good marketing is consistency. A content calendar means that you are consistent in your timings, in your output, and you can keep that consistency to build that brand trust. A content calendar also acts as a source of truth. It also means that you can run your tracking, track what's working and make adjustments where needed for your content strategy. And finally, a content calendar in a calendar form is fantastic for a snapshot. It's great to visualize what's happening in your department, what's happening across your social and your content, but also to spot opportunities. This is how you set up your own content calendar for free. We are going to take you step by step through setting up your own content calendar. Now, what you want to do is you want to navigate yourself to Notion and get a new page, a clean page. If you don't know how to do that, I do have a very, very step-by-step -step beginner's guide on how to set up your Notion profile and then click for new page. But what you want to do is get yourself a clean, empty page. And we're going to call this the content calendar. What you need to do now is to set up your content calendar, which is essentially a database. So we're going to backslash database and create an inline database. Now, as you'll see, the default is a table. We will call this database content calendar so that we know what the title of the database is. This default view is where we will input all of our information. So I like to approach building a content calendar from knowing what I kind of want to put out and then being able to move it around. If we approach it like this as well, we will start to understand what properties and what things we need to add into our database that is built into a content calendar. Notion is incredible because this is where we make it bespoke. If you had a third party tool, you would have to rely on their properties. It's not always that editable. Notion is fully editable and fully customizable. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to populate this with a few things that I will be putting out as content. If you need to add more, there's this lovely little plus button. Notion is very easy to navigate. I'm going to be doing this as quite of a top line view because I do have a beginner's course on Notion. So do check that out. Got my brain dump of ideas of what I want to put out. Now I need to build this database to be bespoke to my business. So one of the properties that we are going to see as a default is tags because tags is a good way to sort. I always leave at least one tag in my databases. So for this, I'm going to choose channel because that's very important when you're looking at what you're putting out on social. This, as you will see, is a multi-select. Again, I've been through all the different types in my previous video, but multi-select means you can select more than one thing. Very useful for knowing the channels. To add properties, all I do is I type, and once I've got what I need, as in the word is finished, I press enter. I'll do this for a couple of channels, and I do have slight OCD, so I like to come to these three dots, and I like to change the colors around, and I like to make them what I think is closely related to what the actual brand is. So we're just gonna go ahead and change these colors. To get rid of these, all you need to do is minus, but I'm just gonna go through, I'm going to say which channels I want things to be on. And it could be all of them, it could be none of them. Then thinking from this top line of what content I want to create, I'm also going to have the date. So I'm gonna go and add a property by clicking on the press, and then I'm going to put in the date. So instead of being called due date, I'm gonna change this to live date. And I'm going to go and do content starting from a couple of weeks, meet the team, intro the product. I'm then going to probably look at what the tease is. I think on launch day, we'll do that on the Monday. And I'm going to keep plotting in these dates that I think are best. So here is where I start looking at what that looks like as a calendar. The way you do that is by adding a view. Now you can change this view, but good practice for me is to add a different view here and add ourselves a calendar view. Now, as you can see, just the titles have populated into the content calendar. To rectify this, we're going to go to these three dots and we're going to click on property and we're going to go show all. 
So now from this view, I can see what's going out on what channel. I can move it around, I can update it, and this will all be reflected in the information here. We've got our basics done. So we can leave it here and we can have our properties and we can have it set up as a calendar, but let's go a step further and make sure it's useful for content. If you're not familiar with Notion, every single piece of information within a database is kept in what's called a card. And this is a card. Within this, you can put anything that you want. You can have all of your mood boarding, you can have your scripting, you can have your references, you can have your entire files, you can have your entire content, you can run feedback, you can run everything through this. But this is also where all information will be housed. With today's video, I'm just showing you how to set up your content calendar. I do have tools where we've got a creative brief that goes in here and we can advance from that, but this is top line on how you set up your content calendar. For today, I'm just showing the simplest version of the card. If you want something more advanced, head over to my Gumroad where you can pick up my free templates. In here, every time you open one of these cards, it's got everything laid out for your campaign, including your summary, your overview, your audience, and your deliverables, and it is preloaded. But for the sake of today, let's keep things simple. For a content management system, you will need a few more properties, and these will be very bespoke to your business, which is what's fantastic about Notion. But what's usually useful to have is to have somebody who is owning it, so an author or what I call accountable, and also having a status. So if we click on more and we choose status, we have the three defaults, which is not started in progress and done, but these are very helpful for knowing how your planning is going. So let's update some of these so I can show you how it works. As you go through and you start using this content calendar, you will find other ways in which you can add properties to make your life easier. Some of the things I include are audience, so I know what's working for which audience, sales funnel, so if I've got different funnels to different products, I also include a key metrics so that I can run and analyze and track everything, but make this bespoke for you. Start simple and build on. As you switch between views, the information will update, but your properties represented will not, so your view will stay the same. So every time you add a property, you want to just go back into that properties and make sure that you're showing them. As well as those properties being able to be shown, you can also use them to filter. And this is very helpful if you've got several people running different channels, you can filter different views to their own information. So for example, if you want to put a filter on, all you need to do is go to these lines here and I can check by channel. So I can choose the channel and I can choose to only see the things going out on Twitter. Adding this filter will remove things that are not going out on Twitter. So if I'm someone running the Twitter, I can filter all these distractions out and just focus on what I need. Filters are incredibly useful because it means that you can manipulate this information to see what you need to see. Different people having different views of the database will not change the data in it. You can have multiple people filtering by themselves to see their workload, multiple people filtering by the channel to see what's going on to each channel. And then when you come to analyzing, you can filter out by your metrics and see what's working. One final thing before I move on to how you actually use it. When you are starting to use this as a business, it is also useful to have yourself a board view. Now we've got the table, which is our list of information. We've got the calendar, which is our editorial calendar. And if we add into this a board view and we look at it through status, all you need to do to change this is you group things by either status or you can group by channel, but status is the best. And we can now see with our editorial calendar where things are in the process. With status, it's a little bit different from multi-select. So if you want to add new properties, you will actually need to go to these dots and edit the property directly and add in your own statuses. And this can be set to what you need to see in order to move your function along. So that's the basics of setting it up for yourself. So this is the template that I have for free on Gumroad. Go and get it, go and grab it, it's amazing, it's great, it's all set up for you. And within this template, we have a space for brainstorming ideas, thinking about the themes we want to do. We've got our table where we're looking at that list of things that we're making. I've split these out by projects, by videos, by social. We've also got a tab here that shows me the videos that are currently unmade that I need to focus on. Down here, I've got my editorial calendar and I've got all the pieces that I know that are going out. Underneath that, I've got my creative production board. So I can look over what's happening in each of the projects in each of the pieces of content that we're doing and make sure we're all on track. This template is that one database that we've built together, built into a little bit more of a bespoke way and layered out so that you've got a full marketing hub because this is gonna show you how to use it in practice. In practice, all you need to do is go through the flow that I've built you, use it to brainstorm ideas. And then from those ideas, get people in your team to create lists. 
create little cards for everything that they think is a fantastic idea. It's a great way for people to be involved in the content going out. It also means that people aren't just scattering their ideas everywhere. You've got a really good, concise list of things that you may or you may not like. So I encourage everyone to add into here. We actually have this field all the way over here, which I'm going to move to the beginning to show just how easy it is to move things around. As the leader of a function, as someone who's accountable, you can go through all of these ideas and you can filter them out by whether they're going to be done or whether they are kind of not good enough. What's fantastic about this is that you don't lose the data. You don't lose all those fabulous ideas. You're getting people to input into this and you can filter it out. You want to use the same database and what you want to do on here is you want to filter out by approved and only show the ones that are approved. So this view, in practice is how you bring all of those good themes and ideas into the content that you want to make. What you want to do for your editorial calendar is make sure that it's got the filter of approved and yes, save for everyone, and then use this as a source of truth. This editorial calendar in its state is your source of truth for your content output. You have one owner that runs it and starts your kickoffs and goes through everything that's coming up on the board. One owner that can click into here, they can see who's accountable for it, they can see what the delivery date is, they can see what the project overview is. But one owner who runs through this editorial calendar and makes sure it makes sense. One person who's able to move stuff around, who's able to add stuff in. One owner that manages this. This is so valuable. This view, this content calendar, is a way to save yourself time, effort and money and be able to spot opportunities. By populating this as a team and by using it as your source of truth on your daily stand-ups, on your weekly stand-ups, on how you're planning your campaigns, everyone around the business will be able to see where there's opportunities to make their new content, where they need to pull back, where they need to move it around and what everything is at in their status. So use this calendar to make sure that everyone is aware of what is happening. In practice as well, it's really good to keep on top of your creative production. This will show up on your board here. So if we are looking at the calendar and we know something's not started, we need to head down to our production board and make sure we're jimmying along the stuff that makes sense. Hopefully that's helped you understand how an amazing free tool like Notion can change the way you run your editorial calendar. It's really simple to set up and it's really powerful to use. If you want more tips and tricks on how to use Notion, please do check out my video that takes you through the full tutorial. If you don't want to do it yourself, head to my Gumroad, grab your free templates and get cracking on this fantastic tool.